You know, I was born and raised in St. Paul. Uh, my dad's from West Africa, a small country called the Gambia. Growing up with my mom was a social worker for 42 years, so, you know, it was always about helping others. Today, who, wait, who said they were making me a surprise today? You can't blow. You can't blow. Is this a dream team over here? Yeah. Blow it up. Can I get a marshmallow? And I tell people, I said, what was the World Cup like? It was awesome. What was, what was the best moment of your career? It was during the national anthem, and I closed my eyes, and I thought of all the people that helped me get there. It was worth it, and I made it. Thank you. And I waited my whole life for that opportunity because so many people believed in me, and I proved them right. At one point after the World Cup, a young girl came up to me and said, hey, can you help me do a soccer camp? And the more I thought about it, you know, I had a responsibility to use what God-given talents I had, my network, my social capital to give back. And then once I started to develop programming, I was good at it and it was contagious and I just kept doing it. And 20 years later, we have 75 staff, $5 million budget, and I'm blessed to get to go to work with some really special people. One of the programs we do is we collect and redistribute gently used soccer stuff. So if anyone ever sees Pick It Back program, we got these shoes here, people donate them. Right now we're just sorting out stuff we get. A lot of this stuff will end up in Haiti, but a lot of these shoes will end up on our high school kids actually here because you know there is a shortage of shoes within our community so that kids can play soccer. We like that. My name is Candace Logan and I'm the executive director of the Dreamline program. The Dreamline program prepares Dreamline coaches to support students in schools from elementary, middle, and high school. We talk about mindfulness, social emotional learning, uh, restorative practices, as well as what does it mean to navigate the landscape of school. So Dreamline coaches are a supplement, they're a support to the, not only the teacher, but uh, mainly to the student to be an additional adult in which they feel a sense of connection with. In the summertime, when we're not mentoring kids in schools, we run free sports camp uh, for nearly 8,000 kids a year. Again, that's dual track. We hire a couple hundred high school kids. Some are jobs, Monday through Thursday they coach, and Friday is their development day. And then lastly, we're here at this community center where, I mean, honestly, anything goes. Uh, the community decides what they want to do. Thank you, Dad. What I do, uh, my name is Ruby, I'm the kitchen coordinator. I make sure the ch uh, children get a balanced, a nutritious meal. And anybody that comes in my kitchen and in this building, I welcome them and I feed them. During the pandemic, we just happened to start feeding people and, and now we feed people six days a week and we've done over three million pounds of food. And everything is connected to making healthier communities designed around the social determinants of health. How you doing, Ms. Nene? Good to see you. Did you bring the good weather? Tino, do you need help? You don't need help, good? Yeah, I don't need help. This is my guy, Tino. You know, he was in the system, he came out working, and now he's, he's one of our, you know, one of our superstars. But when you come out, you know, and they only give you 20 hours of work, there's not much you can do. So, you know, we bought him a house um, down the block, and we gave him 40 hours of work, paid off all of his traffic tickets, and now he's like a model citizen. He's a coordinator here and he's leading this. So now this is his distribution that he does in three days a week here and some other places. And so I think he loves his job in the community folks here. Hey, I used to take away from my community. Now I kind of give back, so mm -hmm. that's dope. We're gonna change the paradigm in this country with support. We gotta start helping the community from the ground up. We gotta bring up the base. We gotta create pockets where it's culturally responsive. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're hardworking people, but we're we're honest people. What you see is what you get. We don't we're not faking it. I mean, it's, it's real people here, and, and we believe in in helping each other out and and keeping it 100. I miss. I interviewed a young lady last week, and she said, "Well, you start to do good, and it feels good, and you want to do more." And we're doing that here as an organization, but we're also doing that with our participants. And when you have a growing number of people that feel good and want to do more, it grows. And we're doing something special here and the word's starting to get out and we're a little known secret. I hope we won't be forever. And we don't want to be because we believe in what we are doing and we believe it can be done in other places. This collection of do-gooders together at a young age, Lord knows what they're going to come up with and how to change the future of this world. 